Welcome to ETMC TV and this informative presentation by Robert Creeth, MD, an emergency medicine physician at the ETMC First Physicians Clinic in Tyler. Dr. Creeth will discuss heart attacks. Thank you for choosing ETMC TV. Well, all through our lives, we collect uh, cholesterol in our arteries. These cholesterol deposits form inside the walls of the arteries, and um, they normally are protected from the platelets by an inside lining of the blood vessels. Um, over time, they build up, and sometimes the inside of those blood vessels, actually the lining ruptures or opens up. That exposes the cholesterol crystals inside to the platelets, and the platelets see that as a foreign matter. They attach, they form a clot, the clot blocks the artery, and then the blood flow ceases down, downstream from where that clot is. At that point, there's a heart attack. Well, there are risk factors, and we have identified these many years ago. Uh, unfortunately, we do fairly poorly on trying to, uh, to uh, get rid of these risk factors in our own lives. Uh, obesity, uh, which is about a third of Americans are obese. Um, high cholesterol is a big one, including the good cholesterol over the bad cholesterol. That's the HDL, which is what, uh, what you want to be high, and the LDL, you want to be low. Um, smoking is a big one and that high blood pressure, diabetes, family history. Typically, the, the onset is pain. It'll be dull. Uh, frequently, it'll be heavy. That's the most common thing I hear. Or pressure um, is another descriptor. Uh, it'll be centered sometime over the center of the chest, most often towards the left side of the chest. But it also can be on the right side of the chest. It can radiate into your arm, your jaw, your back, your neck or into the other side in the right arm. Those are the typical symptoms. And then that's subsequently followed by many other symptoms such as um, cold, clammy, uh, palms sometimes will feel clammy, um, shortness of breath, uh, lightheadedness where you feel like you might pass out, uh, nausea, especially if it's in the bottom portion of the heart near your stomach, you'll feel nauseated along with it, you may throw up. There can also be atypical symptoms such as sharp pain, knife-like pain, Pain that worsens with your breathing can be a heart attack, although it's very uncommon. Uh, pain that is in your abdomen, in the upper part of your abdomen, can also be a heart attack. They say that sometimes up to 44% of women don't have any symptoms at all, meaning no symptoms of chest pain. These are called silent heart attacks. These are the heart attacks that don't have the discomfort in the chest, but they have all the other symptoms that can be attributable to a heart attack. The most important thing really is that the patient identifies that they're in trouble. That's the first thing. And, and as soon as you, you decide that you're having an unusual, um, something wrong with your chest, an unusual pressure or discomfort in your chest, at that point you need to first relax, sit down, rest, okay, call EMS. The ambulances usually will get there very quickly. You want to be on a monitor as soon as possible. Once they get there, they assess the situation, do your vital signs, and then hook you up to what's called a 12-lead EKG. And that's really the way we make the diagnosis most often of heart attacks. Then the EMS will tr typically try to treat you. They'll apply oxygen. They'll start an IV in case something should go awry. They go ahead and give you aspirin, which again is one of the most important things we can do. Then they give you nitroglycerin in order to help open up the arteries and supply more blood to the heart that's starved for blood. And then they transport you as safely as they can to our emergency department. And at our emergency department, once you arrive, we continue basically everything that was done in the pre-hospital setting. We go ahead and draw blood, okay? Through the blood, we can determine whether or not you're actually having a heart attack. It's confirmed through the blood. We normally put you in the hospital for more evaluation. Now that more evaluation can be simply an overnight stay where we do more, ends, more blood tests on you. And if you haven't had a heart attack, then we do a stress test or some other provocative measure to see whether or not your heart's safe from a future heart attack that may occur in the near future. So if on the other hand we do blood tests or your, your EKG or your presentation looks as though you are currently having a heart attack, then typically we put you in what's called the cath lab. The cath lab is, is where specially trained personnel along with a cardiologist will go ahead and actually try to intervene in your heart attack by opening up the artery, taking the clot out, putting what's called a stent, which is kind of a, uh, a support inside the artery to keep it open in the future, and then restoring blood to the heart that, that was without blood just a few minutes before that. So, and then after that, you go to the coronary care unit where you recover from that. Some people cannot go through the cath. They have so much dis extensive disease. So many of their arteries are so diseased. They have to go to what's called a coronary artery bypass graft. 
and what happens there is they go off to surgery and they make an incision and they put arteries that go to the heart itself and supply blood through the heart. Learn CPR. If they go down right in front of you, compressions, roughly at about 100 per minute, okay? About two inches deep on an adult, okay, in the mid sternum, in the mid breastbone here, all right? And then immediately notify 911 so that the, uh, the defibrillator can get to you. The aspirin dissolves fairly quickly in your stomach, but basically um, I would say two chewable baby aspirins. And that's probably what you need to take every day too to prevent a heart attack if you're at risk after you've spoken to your doctor. Eating small meals more frequent in a day as opposed to the standard three meals a day that we grew up on. Uh, when you eat just small amounts whenever you're hungry, um, you'll lose weight. Uh, by doing that because you're not overeating. You need to allow your brain a certain amount of time in order to catch up to what's in your stomach. And uh, secondly, exercise. I see too many folks that try to force themselves to do exercise that they really don't enjoy. Uh, there are a lot of forms of exercise out there. It can be simply getting a dog and walking it every day. Um, it, as long as you're doing more than you were doing the day before, then you're going to lose weight. It takes commitment, but do know this, that every time you do quit smoking, or try to, you are going to be more successful than the time before. High blood pressure, we have con consistently tried to drive down the blood pressures. In other words, what we thought was, was 140 over 90 was high blood pressure, that's too high. Now we want people to be down below 130 over 80, okay? Preferably 120 over 70. In other words, the lower you can go, and still be a perfectly normal individual, the better it is for you uh, overall. Um, diabetes, that follows obesity most times, okay? Of course, we have the young folks that are type one diabetics, but the older folks that are getting to be diabetic primarily because they're obese and they're having what's called insulin resistance because of their obesity, that is somewhat treatable because you can lose weight and you can ameliorate part of that di diabetes yourself. Dr. Robert Kreeth is an emergency medicine physician at the ETMC First Physicians Clinic in Tyler. I went to college at Wayne State University in Detroit, and then I entered medical school at the same university in Detroit, and I studied at Detroit Medical Center. I graduated there, entered the Army, and did my residency at uh, Fort Hood uh, Army Hospital. Um, I did that for three years, and then I was faculty at a residency program after that for four years in San Antonio. After um, uh, completing my Army uh, requirements and going through Desert Storm, um, I got out as a major and um, I came here.